This is the Stark Ranch Farm to Market Store, a shop located in Gainesville, Texas, that offers a wide variety of products from local sources, including meats from Stark Ranch, canned goods, barbecue sauces, ice cream from local dairies, apparel, and so much more. I sat down with Michael Vance, a prominent customer for us at Green Cover Seed and manager of the Stark Ranch and Stark Farm to Market Store to learn more about how cover crops and our garden mixes fit into their operation. Yeah, my name is Michael Vance. Uh, I'm, I'm a managing partner of Stark Ranch uh, in Gaines, Texas. We raise Red Angus bulls and Red Angus uh, replacement peppers. We've been doing cover crops for, this is the fifth year now. Um, uh, we've been doing them on uh, both in fruit and grass pastures overseeding and also some older uh, crop fields that we're, we're taking back in the grass. We're using no-till to put water back in those uh, older crop fields. Probably the biggest challenge that we've had is figuring out how to uh, manage uh, you know, putting in cover, cover crops successfully without using chemicals. That's probably the toughest thing. We really would like to stay away from fertilizers and chemicals both, um, but that's been tough. Uh, we haven't been able to completely do that successfully year round. Uh, so our cool season crops, we can get by without uh, doing chemical burn down, but no warm season crops in general. Uh, we still have to figure out how to that. So lots of people uh, question us on whether cover crops make us money or not. It's very interesting. We have a lot of people that doubt us, but you know, we're a for-profit business, and we uh, we make money grazing cattle. And it's so neat when you can grow a crop. You know, we use cover crops, and you know, to grow crops often in windows when we have very low quality forages. So we're able to have high, very high quality forages and keep gains up during windows of the year that we don't have common uh, grasses that, that really have a lot of pop to them. Um, so we're very we're easily able to pencil it. Um, even in years that are pretty tough in terms of moisture, we've been able to at least break even with cover crops, and that's not even taking into account the uh, value of uh, building our soil health, the value of the carbon, the value of the increased fertility that we have in the soil, um, or the, the value of that, of that actual uh, carbon cover that's laid down on top of the ground. The store that we're standing in is, uh, is a culmination of a lot of ideas. <laughs> you know, we didn't, uh, we kind of stumbled into this. We, uh, uh, it's kind of a long process. We had, uh, we originally wanted to run cattle that would uh, be very efficient. And we, we found that we couldn't find bulls that worked for us. And so we started raising our own bulls with registered Red Angus cattle. Um, and uh, that followed with people that were raising grass-fed beef were looking for bulls that would work on their, their cattle. And so, our bulls that were raised in a forage environment um, ended up working, you know, for them. So we we've been able to grow a business, growing, uh, you know, selling those uh, grass-fed bulls, and then that in turn kind of found our way into the grass-fed beef market, where, uh, you know, which is a very interesting thing. Grass-fed beef is has got a lot of extremes. Uh, we found that there's not a lot of uniformity and a lot of, not a lot of consistency, and, and honestly, there's still not a lot of people working together to. Uh, to grow the grass-fed beef industry, and so we we kind of put that on our shoulders and felt like we want to work to, to grow that business because we have a lot of uh, customers that are interested in it. And so the first thing that we thought we ought to do is, is start creating our own grass-fed beef, and uh, what better way to do that than to put in the retail cuts for our local customers here um, in Gainesville, where we're located. And now we're reaching out to restaurants. We're starting to get restaurant business, and then uh, next we've got a website uh, coming on board soon that we hope we can start sending beef out. We've got a lot of uh, people that are interested in, in ordering our beef uh, that are not remotely close, and so that's gonna give us the opportunity to be able to continue doing business with people that don't, don't live very close to Kansas. So a lot of our complimentary products we've had here, we've seeked out, mainly because we wanna find really high quality stuff. Um, been kinda of hard to do. 
kind of find it one thing at a time. But we try to find products you can't find in Walmart. And, and we try to find stuff that's predominantly uh, locally made uh, and it's really high quality and stuff that complements our beef. And just like we have local wines here um, that are all made within about 45 minutes of here. Um, and there's not a central location to get a lot of this, these wines. A lot of them you have to actually go to the actual winery. And they complement our beef products. When you come in and get, you know, buy some steaks for a night, you can also get a bottle of wine for your wife. And so it gives people more than one reason to come into our store. You know, even if you have the best steak in town, you know, a lot of people aren't going to take the time to come by and just come in to get a, just to get a steak. They need to be able to get a couple of different things. And so we're right now we're trying to layer those complimentary items together to get people to more frequently visit our, our store. produce that we're planting in our cover crops, the Chaos Garden, uh, it has a lot of uh, positives. Uh, the neat thing about that is we don't have a lot of money invested. We've got to plant something in the warm season to first create cover for our ground during the hot part of the year. And so to be able to grow something that's going to, going to give us some soil, uh, some uh, soil health back to us and some soil fertility back to us and then something that's also going to give us some grazing. Whether we can produce a, a produce product or not, we're going to get some grazing on it. And then, uh, you know, to us, the produce is just a, a bonus. And so with having this retail front, if we can take something that we have very little cost in and offer it back to our retail front, it's going to be another complimentary item. You can come in here and get beef and also get fresh watermelons and squash and, and, uh, and cantaloupe and you drove by the field before we've got that stuff planted. Um, that's, that's, that's a very unique situation where, you know, there's nowhere else anywhere close to here that you can do that with the exception of we have a, a, a sweet corn grower down the road from us that does a great job of doing that. So we found that there's there's no other produce here locally besides that sweet corn. So um, instead of trying to grow sweet corn, we're trying to grow stuff that's complementary to our grazing and then also complements our, our beef here in the store as well. Cover crops have been a, a blessing to us from a wildlife perspective. Uh, my family and I, we really enjoy uh, not just uh, harvesting animals, uh, you know, wildlife, but also the conservation of them, see those numbers grow. We've had properties that did not have deer or quail um, at the time, you know, times before when we planted uh, cover crops. It's been, been very neat to see those populations grow and us actually be able to pull wildlife off of neighboring properties because we have more diversity and we offer new species that they're not used to. Um, this past year we had about 11 bucks in our backyard and before that we had had zero deer in that, in that, in that part of the property and, and we had 100 acres of planted behind our house and we had you know numerous does but also had 11 you know, decent decent sized bucks and decent to mature bucks that we watched every evening um, off our back patio and stuff like that is I feel like uh, green green cover seed has, has played an instrumental part in our uh, our bull program. That's really where our passion lies. Uh, you know, we, we we really want to create the kind of cattle that, that run year round on forage. And to do that, though, you have to have year round forage. And uh, you know, we want those bulls to be able to you know thrive on dormant native grasses. And, you know, even dormant improved grasses. But you also had to have you know some really good growing forages during off times a year to keep those bulls in, in condition to be able to be in self shape. Um, we want bulls that will go out and work hard, but also they have, they have to look good or people are not going to believe in them. Um, we want bulls that are powerful and thick and deep, and, and that's not something you can create with low quality forage. And so, you know, part of part of creating a bull that's, that's uh, you know, 100% uh, grass-based bull that, you know, works for everything he ever gets is, is you know, creating a forage program that uh, gives him every opportunity in the world to, to, to fill out his full potential. And it's been so nice to have somebody to work with to help us fill those forage gaps, um, to allow us to be able to see a bull reach his full potential without taking any grain, without going out there every day with a feed truck. And honestly, our bulls, unless we're moving them, we, don't, we have no reason to check them. A lot of our bulls get checked once a week and they're out on, on uh, either cover crops or, you know, or, or stockpile. You know, covers uh, during off times of the year when we may not have any other grasses growing, and, and we're able to stockpile those in high enough quality. Those bulls are able to maintain, maybe not put on a lot of extra flesh, but when bulls come back off of cows, they're in, they're in good shape, and, and we're able to show them to customers and not be ashamed um, of what they look like. <laughs>
very, very, have a lot of pride in what his goals look.